Hey, I'm David Beebe. Welcome back to the Solo YouTube channel and to the first video in a new series of short lessons. Solo is a really powerful tool for developing your fretboard knowledge and visualization, but it's also very flexible and open-ended in how you can use it. So the idea behind these video lessons is to show you how you can set it up and use it for some really effective and targeted practice sessions. Tom Quayle and myself will be alternating these lessons weekly, so if you want to learn how to get the most out of Solo, and you're interested in how Tom and I both practice with Solo, be sure to subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell to be notified of when we post new videos. So today for this first lesson, we're looking at how we can use Solo to level up our arpeggio control, and to improve our ability to target and visualize chord tones when we're soloing through chord changes. Now, we'll quickly say that this lesson isn't for complete beginners. I'm assuming that you know what arpeggios are and you've done a little bit of work on them in the past. Having said that, it's not super crazy advanced either. And to be honest, this is a skill that we can all be working on to varying degrees. We're definitely gonna be making lessons aimed at all different ability levels though. And in fact, Tom has a great introductory lesson to solo on his YouTube channel that I'll link in the description down below. Okay then, let's grab guitars, I'll change camera, and let's get started. So the chord changes that we're gonna use for this lesson is the good old favorite standard autumn leaves. So we've got that loaded up in solo now. And the level we're gonna choose uh, for now is the root three, five, and seven. And this gives us the basic four note chord tone arpeggio that will be mapped across each chord in the tune. Now, a very common traditional way to develop your chord tone solo in is to practice arpeggios. And for most guitar players, this often involves developing uh, very rigid, large uh, shapes. So an arpeggio shape might be anchored to the low E or A string. So the first chord is C minor seven. So I might develop my arpeggio of C minor seven like this. <laughs> And then I anchor to the A string and do the next chord, which is F7, which would be this. And this is all well and good in that we're hearing the sound of each chord going by and we have something to play on the instrument. But it lends itself to a very predictable, fixed, rigid sound because we're anchoring our, the note that we really are paying attention to and that we are consciously aware of is the root note. So for the C minor seven, I know with this traditional way of practicing that this note is the root, C. And I have a, a vague awareness of that this would then be the flat three and this would be the five. But when you practice it in this way, what happens is that, the, that awareness of those other intervals is a little less instantaneous. It's, you can't access it and target it in a very um, controlled musical way. So what this lends itself to is you end up with this kind of a sound. And that's okay, we get in the sound of each chord, but it's hard to build musically interesting lines with that kind of way of thinking. So what we want to do is to develop our visualization of each of the intervallic functions and the notes within the chord in a, much, in a much more random access way. So if I want to be able to play the third or the five or the seven of any particular chord, because that's what I'm hearing and that's what makes sense melodically uh, with the line that I'm playing, then that's what we have. So we can set solo up in such a way as to drastically improve this ability. Our ability to target the individual notes within a chord without having to trigger a large muscle memory pattern in order to get there and find them. So turning our attention to solo, we're actually gonna change the level. We're gonna do root three, five, seven random inversions. Now, what this is gonna ask you to do is to play a random inversion of root three, five, seven for each of the chords within the progression. Now, if you've not practiced your arpeggios from the third or from the fifth or from the seventh, this is gonna be quite tricky in of itself, but it's a way to start the process. So we're gonna leave the workout options as forward and I'm gonna hit start changes workout and we'll see what happens. Oh yeah, one more thing before we actually do it. I'm gonna block off frets four to nine and only work within that area. This is an additional limitation that will really help prevent us from just taking those large shapes we know and moving them around, transplanting them root note to root note. And it'll really help us think in a lot more detailed ways. So over the first chord, C minus seven, it's selected it to go seven or flat seven, one, flat three, five. So I would play that, you know, flat seven, one, flat three, five. 
it's changed to the next call, the F7, and now it's selected the inversion of it, 5 flat 7 one 3. Now you can practice and should practice this in ascending pitch order. So the lowest note you play is the 5, and you ascend in pitch to the flat 7, ascend in pitch to the 1, ascend in pitch to the 3. But I'm going to skip that step for now and just play a 5 in any octave. Then the flat 7, but in any octave and the root in any octave, etc. And this is a little bit more organic and a little bit more of a workout for your visualization. So I'm going to find a five against an F, so I'll choose this one here. I've got the five, flat seven, come down to the root, the one here, then up to the three. Then we've got a nice easy one, three, five, seven, so I'll go on the B flat, one, three, five, seven. For this one, we're starting on the three, so the E flat. So I'm going to choose this three here against this E flat. I've got three, come down to the five, up to the seven, and come down to the one. So, as you can probably see here, it's much harder for me to remember, unless you've memorized all of the permutations of, of what those shapes might be. Uh, it's going to be incredibly hard to do it that way. It's going to force you into thinking more about what is that discrete interval function looking like against the root note. So if I do that a little bit quicker. We can start to hear the harmony of the progression coming out and as arpeggios, but it's all mixed up. It's not just running through those large patterns and giving that very predictable sound. So when you've worked on that for a little bit, the next thing to try is to go back to one, three, five, seven, and now hit random. Now this is truly going to randomize each of those intervallic functions, the one, the three, the five, the seven, for each of the chords. And at this point now, it's nigh impossible to have memorized a large particular sh brute force shape for each of them. You're going to have to be thinking discreetly of each one and visualizing each one uh, against a root note or however you choose to, to, um, to visualize it. But we have to be able to target them one at a time. And of course, the beautiful thing about solo is it just waits for you to do that. You can take as long as you need. And that's one of the wonderful things I think about this process is you're not pressured, you can take as much time as you need to get it right and to solidify uh, these where these notes fall. So if I hit start changes workout now, so flat seven, one, flat three, five, three, flat seven, five, one, seven, one, five, three, three, Now, if I do that faster without talking, you're going to really start to hear, again, the progression coming out. Another thing that you might want to do is turn on voice leading in the workout options. That's this toggle here. Now, this is still going to randomize the root 357, but it's going to voice lead between the changes. It's going to glue them together with the smoothest, shortest possible distance. So the last note you play on a current chord will move into the first note of the next chord by either a half step, a whole step, or a, or a minor third. And this again is going to get you to see and hear on the instrument um, some of the smoothest possible options we have when building a melodic line. And it's going to, yeah, force you further away from doing the whole large jump, jump, etc. Okay, so if I demonstrate that briefly.
So over time, with enough practice at this, and over lots of different tunes and progressions, you'll start to get very comfortable at targeting at will the chord tones for the harmony that you're playing over. And this gives you a very uh, relaxed, zoomed out, bigger picture approach to playing over changes, even when they're quite complex. And I think you're able to say uh, a lot more, often with a lot less, and you're not forced into triggering every note of the arpeggio, because that's the only way that you can recall that information. Okay, so a few more tips then to really get the most out of this. Remember to take your time and don't rush the process. Solo's gonna wait for you to do it properly. And I really can't say that enough, in fact. Like, I've rushed through this in quite uh, a brisk fashion for this lesson. But you'd wanna spend quite a long time on each part of this process and really sort of drill and dive deep into seeing each intervallic function against the root note of each chord in all the different ways possible. So that brings me to the next point on finding the intervals themselves. Try not to neglect descending to an intervallic function. So over the C minor seven, um, if I choose this root note here of C to visualize, try to equally descend to the flat three here, say, or here, if we're at moving outside of the, the uh, five fret zone limitation. But the point is that it's very easy for most guitar players to see an ascending interval. So here's the flat three ascending, um, or here's the flat three ascending, or here. But descending to it is often the Achilles heel, and it's the thing that can often trap us into this hole. Because descending in a sort of musical, uh, targeted, um, willful way is much more difficult. So you could limit yourself within the exercise solo um, to alternating between an ascending and a descending intervallic function shape. So if I set that up again and hit start. So for this one, I'm gonna play the flat three. I'm gonna visualize the C here and play an ascending visualization shape. So I might go flat three. Now I'm going to uh, ascend to the flat seven, still visualizing this C, I'm gonna to ascend to here. Okay, still visualizing this C, I'm gonna to descend to the five. And then still visualizing this root note C, I might play that root note. Now you could go through the entire progression like that, imposing that limitation on yourself, so you're equally practicing um, the various ways that you can visualize the uh, intervallic functions going up and down. Okay, so that wraps up just about everything I wanted to cover in this first lesson. I do hope you found it enjoyable, useful, and it's give you some insights to some of the ways that we can set solo up to help us practice the hard things. And that's what it's really doing. It's, it's supporting and aiding us in practicing the things that are hard to discipline ourselves with. And this will be challenging for some of you guys, especially if the idea of not starting your arpeggios on the root note is new to you. But stick with it, give it some concerted effort and time, and I promise you that this will pay off massively and drastically improve your overall fretboard knowledge and specifically this arpeggio control and your ability to target chord tones in chord tone soloing. One final thing to say, I guess, in this a small caveat, is that everything that we've been doing here have been note finding exercises. And none of this is to take the place of listening, transcribing, learning licks and lines, and all those other really important musical skills and considerations that we should be nurturing at the same time. What we've been focusing on is developing our understanding and our real-time control of finding harmony on the instrument. And we're using these uh, very common chord progressions as vehicles in order to do so. If you don't have Solo yet, you can download it now in the iOS App Store. It's available for iPhone, iPad, and Apple Silicon Macs. And we have an Android version coming very soon, we promise. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like it, subscribe to the channel, and let us know in the comments how you got on with the exercises. And also let us know how you're using Solo. That'd be really cool to know. What ways are you using it to practice with? Okay then guys, thank you so much. And until next time, I will buzz off.